Did you know that there's a difference between swearing, cursing, and cussing? If we're talking biblically, then there's actually a very distinctive difference between the three terms. The Bible is very clear in prohibiting swearing any oaths and cursing your neighbor or wishing doom or harm upon them. But the Bible actually has nothing to say about cussing. And in fact, there's many examples in the Bible of what would be considered cussing in the ancient world. But today, Christians don't really think of it because it's not the kind of words that we consider to be cussing. But ironically, Christians seem to have no problem swearing oaths, even on the Bible that says not to swear oaths, or cursing their neighbor, wishing harm or doom upon someone. But the second they hear a cuss word, they quite literally lose their shit. So my good friend Derek Day invited me to come on his podcast to have a conversation about these terms, along with our other good friend Kyle Butler. And needless to say, we had a pretty fun conversation. So without further ado, please enjoy this very enlightening discussion on the difference between swearing, cursing, and cussing. I'm ready to rock. All right, too. Take it away. So, here's the deal. There People always talk about bad words, bad language, foul language, profanity, whatever you want to call it. And what the premise of this discussion is, is that not all cussing is cursing or swearing because cussing, cursing, and swearing are all different things. And that you could use profanity and it could be in a good way. Or you can use something that's not profane and it'd be a curse or swear. Follow what I'm saying? So that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about cursing, cussing, and swearing, why they're not all the same thing. And let's rock and roll. I, 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 one of the things that I pulled up, right, in the Bible, in the Bible, right, <laughs> in, in the Old Testament, there are eight occurrences of the word piss. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I had no idea. Of the word piss. And it makes me really happy for some reason. Well, when you look at that, <laughs> the, the word is hairy, hairy. And it's from an unused and vulgar root, probably meaning to evacuate the bottles. <laughs> mm. oh, uh, so, so, oh, no, so that's actually so. dung. My bad. That's the definition of dung on the Old Testament. Uh, piss is the... Uh, Water, figuratively juiced by euphemism, urine, semen, piss, wasting water. Now, this is from Strong's. <laughs> so someone, you're telling me someone actually wrote that? Yeah. It, they, they, that was, it, was that inspired or that we take out? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's the word of God. You God said it first. <laughs> I'm just repeating God. <laughs> You know, it, it's like there, there's there's a thing in there where it says that God is going to cut off everyone that pisses against the wall. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty explicit. That makes me so happy for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a fundamentalist, you can officially say piss. Yeah, you yeah, can say piss. Don't guilt about it. Go. <laughs> but but here's the thing. I'm going to throw one more out. Right, Philippians three and eight. Have you guys ever checked this out? It says, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things and do count them as dung, that I may win Christ. And do you know what that word dung means? It, 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 the Greek is skybala. Skubala? Skubala. Skubala. And, and, and watch that. It says, neuter of a presumed derivative of 1519 and 2965 and 906, what is thrown to the dogs, i.e. refuse or dung. And it says any refuse as the excrement of animals, off scourging, rubbish, dregs of things worthless and detestable. In other words, Paul was saying, I count it all as bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> or dog shit, actually. That, that too. I mean, it's, <laughs> but it's the excrement of animals, right? <laughs> So let me show you. One of you guys, go ahead and chime in, man. Let's 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 go ahead and, and kick this thing around. I mean, what's the difference between saying dung or shit or crap? What's the actual difference? 
mechanically, right? Right. There is absolutely no difference. It's a sound you make with your mouth, and it's not about the sound you make with your mouth, but what you're referring to. Exactly. Right. And it, shouldn't that be obvious to everyone? Well, I don't know. Kyle, like, what do you think? <laughs> hey, look, I grew up in an environment where you couldn't say anything. So I would I found words that sounded like yep. that say. Yep. Freak. I was a big Gosh, freak. Like, what the freak? What the freak? What you the know? freak? <laughs> well, I don't give a five cents. That's what, another my one Come of my on. favorite phrases. But it all, meant the, it, it all meant the same thing. And, and my mom mm -hmm. once told me, she said, you should stop saying those words because I know what you're trying to say. And I would say, well, let me say what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, let me say what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, so, so watch this, right? I gave you guys a homework assignment, right, to watch the fantastic Mr. Fox. And, and chances are you didn't actually watch it. Because, I couldn't find you know, it anywhere. Well, you know what, let me tell you, you can find a lot of outtakes in, on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. But one of the things that they say constantly throughout the movie is, what the cuss? What the cuss? And, and cuss is, a, is an old English word for an animal or animal chatter, mm -hmm. right? So if you're cussing by society standards, you're talking like an animal. But watch this. If you look in the Bible, there is no prohibition against cussing. But there are prohibitions against cursing and swearing. Hmm. And, and, and watch this. If you've ever been to court and served as a witness, you take an oath. If you do jury duty, you take an oath, right? If you join the military, you take an oath, right? You solemnly swear, right? Yeah. This is so funny. Watch, you're solemnly swearing on the very Bible that tells you not to take an not oath. Not to swear. <laughs> yeah, point. doesn't it say don't swear oaths in the Old Testament? Yeah, it, even in the New Testament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good point. Yeah, it sure does. Wow. Uh oh, we're in trouble. Right. <laughs> but you're, you know, you, but if you say shit, you're swearing. No, I'm not swearing. I just use. I, I like to call it sentence spice. Sentence you know, spice. Yeah, you know, it's just something <laughs> that's amazing. Boom, you know, you, you, you throw on what you're <laughs> saying. Just a, a little bit. You know, make it pop. <laughs> so, what do you think the derivative of this whole taboo against swearing is for Christians. Like if the, the Bible seems to be pretty clear that it's talking about don't swear oaths, right? Yeah. And don't curse your neighbor, like wish them doom or harm or something. Yeah. So then where's this fetish come from for potty words? Well, you said the thing, man, fetish. It, it's yeah. like people, people look at things, well, that's naughty. And because it's naughty, we shouldn't think that or we shouldn't say that. <laughs> Right? Because yeah. we shouldn't have naughty thoughts, right? Right. Yeah, no one has naughty thoughts. You know, isn't it all the parents, though? You know, what are we really saying behind closed doors? What are we saying when, mm -hmm. when we're frustrated or we're trying, to, we're trying to get our point across? You know, I didn't grow up cussing. You know, I, I tried to be a good little Christian boy, so I didn't cuss a lot. <laughs> but whenever I did cuss, I was trying to get my point across. I was trying to make an emphasis. However, I, I, I would love listening to comics who cussed. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. there's just something about when a comic says a word that we consider a, curse, a cuss word that just makes it so much more funnier. I'm often laughing hysterically when I hear people go off in a cursing, a, a cussing rant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's often, I, I often laugh hysterically when I see people it's just hilarious. trying to express themselves yeah. by using these flavorful words. To me, <laughs> it's extremely funny. It's just a form of expression. Right. What's wrong with expressing yourself if you're not, you know, wishing harm on somebody? Like, that, that should be the point, right? Like, it should be so obvious that it, it has, the words you use really have no bearing whatsoever but the intention behind the words is what matters. So like, right. if you say, you know, like I used to say darn and gall dang right, and right, heck right, and right. stuff. Dang and, and heck, yeah. And well, so, you know, you're good. Throw an example, right? Like, let's say you say, Lord, dear Lord, I pray that you strike down my enemy, strike him down in his mm -hmm. chest. Let all he thinks and say come to naught. 
in Jesus' name, <laughs> right? Now they put they they that's their certain spice in Jesus' name makes everything good, right? You're good. <laughs> but 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 watch this, right? It what's the difference between that and and saying, you know, man, you know, you are fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. So you so you just use you 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 said something completely clean to curse somebody, but you use a cuss word to give somebody a compliment. Like Aaron, you were fucking awesome, right? Thank you follow what I'm saying? People trip out over stuff like that. And and mm -hmm. I'm telling you, people are gonna watch this and they're gonna be like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and their fingers <laughs> are gonna tighten up. Oh you know. <laughs> I think it's actually healthy for people, especially people that grew up religious and fundamentalist yeah. like, like we did, to yeah. start swearing, to sort of break down those old religious taboos because like it's a part of the, like the ego loves to be offended. It's looking for a reason to be offended because it enjoys it. It's a way that it sort of validates itself and like, oh, I am so holy. Yeah, because I'm offended at that. I must be holier than that person, right? Yeah. And you need to break that shit down, man. That's not healthy to live that way. And you're not going to be able to relate to people that way. You're, no one's going to like, no one likes to be around somebody like that, you know? And the minute you start, I mean, for me anyway, I grew up like you, Kyle. I tried, you know, I cussed all the time with my friends, but like I never would cuss in church or around people that were Christian because I didn't want them to think I was evil. And the minute I, I let that go and I was cool to like, you know, swear when I felt like swearing and not feel guilty about it i felt like such a huge sense of freedom in my life you know what i mean like this huge oh, weight was off my back all of a sudden hey let me tell you guys a story i heard a story once of a a traveling evangelist he was very popular he was do, he was doing this healing crusade he was in town for three days on the third night this this guy who came in he was you know he was he had cancer of wrapped in his body. They said he looked like a biker. So he came up to the altar when they did the altar call for healing. And the guy said, the, the evangelist said to the guy, what's your issue? He said, I got cancer. And he said, I want you to curse that cancer. And the guy took the mic and said, get the fuck out of my body. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and not like that, not like that. <laughs> and they snatched the mic from him. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, but the guy got was was completely healed. Are you serious? He was completely healed. Oh completely my god! Completely healed. So, was God offended, mm -hmm. or did the man say what he meant? Okay, Kyle, you just brought up a really good point. Is God that petty? Is mm -hmm. God really concerned about our little uh, language peccadillos? Or is, is there something bigger? Because watch this. Paul says something about don't let any corrupt communication cross your lips. And people say, see, there it is, there it is. It says, it says right there, don't cuss. Okay, corrupt communication by whose standard? Mm -hmm. yeah. See, and and I've, I've reread that uh, many times, and I've found that that means don't say anything that's not rooted and grounded in love, right? right. But, right. It, it, okay, so if, if I, you know, if I say, man, Kyle, my brother, you are the shit. <laughs> hey, I said something to you in, the, in, 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 love. The, in the hood, I know what that means. Exactly. I'm the man. It means you're the shit. Dude, Aaron, Aaron's <laughs> not from the hood, and he understands that. I know what it means. <laughs> I know what it means. <laughs> it's a colloquialism. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, and again, what, what, what I'm hoping to do is, is, and Aaron, you said this, that if you're rooted and grounded in legalism and fundamentalism, it just might behoove you to let a few, you know, F-bombs fly <laughs> just so that you could break down your religious, you know, the religious walls around your, your mind to take the scales off. Because the thing is, is, watch, we're supposed to be witnesses of love to the world. You know, we're supposed to be beacons of light. Well, if you can't be a beacon of light if you're the guy that whenever you show up, everybody's like, ooh, that time to get the fuck out of here, right? You, you, know, <laughs> you can't be that guy. If you're, the, if you're the guy that scares everybody away, you, what kind of light are you? Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Yeah, like just say fuck a few times and sit around and watch and you won't get struck by lightning. And you'll be like, all right, God must be cool with it. Exactly. Let me tell you another story. 
I was working once for a mortgage broker and so the, the office is pretty laid back. We, we had the, 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 I guess the opportunity kind of come and go as we, we please. We're independent contractors for the mortgage broker. I was working, well, the desk next to me was a pastor's wife. So she was a co-pastor of a church. Mm -hmm. So when we met each other, you know, we're talking about God all day and God, 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 and I'm a pastor and she's a co-pastor. We're God, 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 God all day long. <laughs> well, one day, the, she's sitting right behind me. She gets a phone call and she is going in on this call. I don't give a fuck. Shut the hell up. I mean, she just, she just going off. I mean, and, and my eyes are like this. My eyes are like this. I'm expecting her to get off the phone and say, Pastor Colin, I'm so sorry. I just lost it for a moment. I'm so, so sorry. She hung up the phone, turned around and said, Phew. So what were we talking about? Oh my <laughs> god! That's the kind of person I want to hang out with. <laughs> you know, I, I never heard someone of the cloth talk that way before. <laughs> but she had no issue with it, no issue whatsoever. She was no being real. Yes, she's being real. She's being authentic. She, being she didn't felt like she owed me an apology, got an apology, or anybody else. You just said something there, Kyle, or or or. or um, Actually, Aaron, you said something about being authentic, right? And, and watch this. I have like a lot of friends, a lot of friends who are in ministry. And one of the things that I've been able to do, and, and I really, I love this, is that I've been able to set a, a table for a lot of my friends that says, okay, here's a safe place where you can say what's on your mind, right? And, and, and I'm, I'm not kidding. One time, me and this one brother, we're sitting up having barbecue. And, and we're just going in. I mean, if, if somebody was just, you know, sitting at another table listening, they would not have said, this is two pastors talking, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, maybe two stand-up comics that are, you know, sharpening their routine <laughs> for the, you know, for the improv or whatever, that, <laughs> whatever it is. But he gets a call, and it's one of his members. Hello, this is Pastor speaking. Hello, brother. And, and and he gets he gets you know real you know real somber and everything. Yeah, pass the so, point. So, so anyway, he hangs up the phone. He said, "Yeah." So so back to what the fuck I was saying. He said, like, "Fuck that guy." <laughs> and, and, but but here, here's the thing. You know, people people are looking for a safe place where they can be with people who they can let their hair down with, who they can be authentic with. And and that's really what we need to be doing. If you can't show anybody love if you're trying to put on a facade. No, nope. right? yeah. you can't. And you, you know what, Derek, you said something earlier. You know, we've taken in, in different cultures, different communities, we've taken some of these words, we've made them cool amongst ourselves. Right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like when you said Kyle's the shit, well, I know what that means. Now, because you're my boy, right? And I right. look up to you and, and I like Derek's Derek's my man. You call me that, it's it, I feel proud. Mm -hmm. I don't feel degraded. I don't feel like you, you offended me or put me down. I feel proud because, like, yo, he called me his boy. So we've taken some of these words, and in our communities and in our, in our, in our, in our, in our social settings, we've made these words kind of cool in certain contexts. Mm -hmm. And in that way, again, what are we really mm -hmm. saying? We just use them to say something different. But you know what I mean when, I, when right. you say it. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean when you say it. You know what I mean when I say it to you. That's all that really matters. Right. I don't yeah. know about you guys, but when I was growing up as a Christian and like I, back when I believed swearing was wrong, I, uh, I was never one of those people that like got offended when somebody cussed around me. Like I never did that ever, right? Uh, I just wouldn't swear because I thought it was like wrong or whatever. But even as a Christian who believed that cussing was wrong, it annoyed the shit out of me when other Christians were like, oh, don't use that language around me. Like, oh, it's so unholy. Yeah. Oh, wash your mouth out with soap. It's just like, it's just this moral peacocking. It's so cringy, you know? And I think uh, one of the most really pivotal moments for me with, with the whole swearing thing was um, it was actually the day that I quit my job at my old church. And there was this homeless guy, I've told the story in one of my vlogs, but there was a homeless guy on the, the stairs of our church and he, uh, my pastor called the cops on him and this ambulance came, strapped him into this gurney, there was cops there and they were wheeling this guy out. 
and I was livid because I was about to go out. I had like gone back to the kitchen and heated up my food. I had a hot pocket and stuff. I was going to serve this homeless guy my, my lunch. And like, I was like, I'm going to cast the demons out of this guy and stuff. Like, I was all, you know, about like saving this dude. I walk out and he's strapped to a gurney and my pastor's standing there like approving, you know, like get him out of here. And uh, the guy was in the gurney and he was yelling out. Uh, he was like, fuck you church motherfuckers like over and over and over. Right. And uh, the cops and the ambulance attendants uh, and my pastor, they were like, Oh, come on, please don't use this language in the house of God, like save it for outside. And my pastor sort of turned away in disgust, like, Oh, get him out of my sight. And it was like one of the most, um, it was almost like surreal, like a dream. Like, I remember like it happened yesterday. Like I had this twit, like this shift inside of me of like, I ain't about this life. Like there's so much hypocrisy here. Like here we are kicking a homeless person out of our church when Jesus's whole ministry was about, Hey, take in the widow, the orphan, the homeless person. And when you didn't do it to them, you didn't do it to me. So get away from me. You who practice wickedness. Right. And then here's my pastor saying, Oh, get this wicked man out of my sight. He's swearing. It's like, look how far we've fallen, you know, we've, we've so missed the point. Yeah, and, and you know, that's like Peter, you know, Jesus told Peter that you're going to deny me three times, right? And, and, and Peter said, I don't know the man, I don't know the man. And so finally, he cussed somebody out, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, th that's what happened. The True. third time, he, you know, he said that he, uh, you know, swore out or whatever. But they, basically, it came to like, and Peter was kind of like this guy. He was the Wait, guy that not, cut not, the, the soldier's ear off. You know, he was the, the guy who would cuss you out. And, and watch this. What did Jesus do to him? He says, Peter, feed my sheep. Peter, feed my lambs. Peter, feed my sheep. In other words, he, he said, okay, Peter, I get that you've got a potty mouth, but you're my boy. <laughs> so I got you. You know, it's like Jesus, Jesus hung around with prostitutes, with uh with lepers, with drunkards, and with loan sharks, which that's the that's the actual term for the tax collectors. They were mm -hmm. loan sharks, mm -hmm. knuckle breakers, right? And and this is who Jesus, this was his posse. And you know that the, when you get these kind of people together, you know it's some cussing going on. You know, it, it's some Aramaic, you know, cussing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some Eli, Eli, I like my I like my lacha. It's it's some stuff going on, and Jesus never. I, man, I went back and I scoured scripture because people say man, Jesus can't look on sin. I said, but wait a second, you know, his posse, they were like, you know, they were street people. They were guttural, and and they weren't the prim and proper, you know, holier than thou people. No, these were people that really probably got down with some language. They were from the hood. They're from the hood. There you go. I mean, yeah. what does brood of vipers mean? Like brood, that's like uh, children of vipers, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Snakes. You sons of bitches. Like, it's the same thing. It's the oh, same you know, thing. They, in that culture. He, yeah. called, he called them children of hell, yeah. right? Which that right. was Gehenna. And Gehenna was the trash dump, right? So basically, <laughs> he was like, Jesus was like, you dirt bags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need to go in together and make like a hood translation of the Bible. <laughs> oh, God. Have all kinds. Of, isn't there a Bible that has cussing in it, like a swearing translation? I'm pretty sure there is. <laughs> For like people that have like filthy mouths, they like can understand what Jesus is saying and stuff. <laughs> well, you, you know what? That's, you that's know, a good point. What is what is probably. The, the larger segment of the population like? Are, are they, when it comes to, to this topic, are they proper, mm -hmm. holy, mm -hmm. you know, discreet? I don't think so. Not, not the majority of the population. No. So, you know, again, we, I think the narrative got all wrong and we wanted people to look like a certain look and sound like a certain sound and no. be a certain be. Mm -hmm. And we totally have convinced people that you can't be you. you don't dare express yourself the way you've always expressed yourself. Mm -hmm. You better do it this way. And if you don't do it this way, you won't meet our level of approval. 
And we're back to some of the same bondage and slavery and exactly. debauchery that mm -hmm. we've been trying to claw away away from. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think that it, it's a big part of it again, is just trying to, trying to mold people into what we think is acceptable and just throwing people away who we, thought, who we think aren't acceptable. Mm -hmm. But the large portion of our society and population uses these words and have no issue with it. And mm -hmm. I think no, that says a lot. I got a question. Who, who decides what is vulgar? Who mm -hmm. is the standard bearer of vulgarity versus purity? There is none. I mean, so, it, because if, if somebody can show me that line, mm -hmm. you know, because people say, be ye holy for I am holy, which while I'm here, just let me throw that out, that that's not a command. That's a, a, a statement of being that you yeah. are holy because he is holy. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. know, but, but yeah. thing, it, you know, let's, you know, raise the consciousness here that it's not about your language. It's not about what you say. What about, what about someone who speaks in sign language? Now, I know some people who are hearing impaired who speak in American sign language and they can cuss you up one side <laughs> of, the, of the building and down the other. Good you know, point. With, with sign what, language, okay? Yeah. So, so what, what, you know, where is the, who determines whether that is vulgar? Right. You know, I'm just trying to get to this because when, when people say, well, you shouldn't cuss. Okay, who said that? Well, the right. Bible says. Well, the Bible doesn't really say so. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> Here's what I think it really comes down to is that religion always emphasizes the outward sins, right? And yep. gives almost no credence to the inward sins, pays almost no attention to the inward sins. So they'll him ha all day long about don't have sex, don't drink alcohol, don't do drugs, and do not swear. Those are the big four, right? If you don't do those four, you're holy. Yet they care nothing about envy, pride, hypocrisy, right? Hatred of your Hatred. brother. And I don't know about you guys, but, you know, you guys grew up in church ministry like I did. So, you know, there's a whole lot of backstabbing and betrayal and hypocrisy that goes on in the, in the politics of church. And this is, you know, anywhere you go in, in the world sure. where there's church, there's people getting stabbed in the back. There's leaders being usurped, oh, yeah. you know, and the people, it's always the people that are the holiest of holy who don't swear. I don't say anything wrong. Who will stab you in the back as soon but as they get a chance. There's more cursing and swearing going on in your average church than there <laughs> is in your average comedy club. It's true. Oh, yeah. That's so true. That's such a good point. You know, they, Derek, they, they, they'll curse you. Oh, well, sister so-and-so, you know, she, you know, she ain't, she kind of loose, right? No gossip <laughs> about you. No yep. Gossip, right? And then, and then, you know, Lord, I swear, if I, if they say something else, tell me, right? You know, <laughs> it's cursing, it's swearing, and they said a cuss word, but they, they, you know, they violated things. Whoa, the stop the show. Kyle's <laughs> <laughs> over there. Uh, Kyle is over there. Uh, he's, 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 you know, he's putting rounds in the clip right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Derek, you know, you're a pastor. You know, I was pastoring for many years. So we got a chance to know many, many pastors. And outside of the pulpit, outside of the church with the steeple, we had private conversations with private encounters with, and we got a chance to hear them and see them and vice versa. And I tell you what, some, some, of, the, some of the people that I love and respect the most in ministry, privately outside of the view of many others, come out of their little shell and become real. Mm -hmm. And that to me has been one of the things that has helped me realize th there really are no shells, you know? And I, I was a big, I was a big hypocrite for a long time because I was one of those who judged everything based upon the outward appearance. But, you know, I, I shortly, I, I quickly realized once I started understanding grace and God's unconditional love is that, Hey, 
people will be who they are. And dad's okay with that. Yep. We're mm -hmm. the ones with the hang up. We're the ones with the issue. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I started realizing that, you know, it just, I, you know, it, it, I remember thinking, I don't, I don't like telling people I'm a pastor because as soon as I do, they stop being who they are. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. They try to watch their language. They try to watch what they say. And I don't want to put people in that kind of bondage. Yeah. Be you. I'm not offended. I, I won't be offended by your joke or, or whatever you say. I want you to be you. Mm -hmm. Just be you. Whatever form that's in, be you. Nobody likes to play roles. No. You know, it's like, what are we doing here? We're all like in this room pretending to be people differently than what we really are. Isn't that strange? But it's like such a normal phenomenon for like the American, you know, not even American church in general around the world. It's like, it's this place where we all show up and pretend to be something other than what we really are. Yeah. We're trying and, to impress one another. It is, is this something that God can't <laughs> forgive? I mean, is this, is this beyond God's purview to forgive? Because that's, that's the other thing. You know, people say, oh, you cuss. You know, that's like you're saved, but you can lose your salvation or, or all of these different things. And is God that narrow? Is God that shallow? Is God that limited that, you know, that he's totally turned off by what we say? Or is there something bigger? And that's the thing. Yep. Hey, you, you know what? S speaking of, um, you know, pastors and such, I have a, one pastor friend. He's, he's more like a father figure, mentor. He's 80 plus years old and he's Italian. And one day at lunch, you know, this is back in the, in the early 2000s. One day at lunch, I said, Pastor John, man, I, I've been really curious about this ever since I met you. You're Italian. You grew up Italian. Do you drink wine? And he says, of course, I've been drinking wine since I was five years old. <laughs> and, you know, of course, this is one of those things that were off the table for us. You know, you don't mm -hmm. do that. And he said, I've been drinking wine since I was five years old. Because what, what, what hit me in my mind was, this is his culture. This is what he knows. Mm -hmm. So what about people who grew up in a household where they're free speech? They got total free speech. They, you know, they, this is how they feel. This is what they say. Do we expect them to come outside of what they know, their culture, to try to fit into some little box because they think that God needs them to be this way? Mm -hmm. My dear friend, Pastor John, never stopped drinking wine. He had it around his dinner table all his life. So just because he became a pastor, he didn't stop doing what he's always done. You know, he's since gone into beers now and stuff like that. So. Um, <laughs> and you know that doesn't get him a, a lot of uh, calls to come preach in different churches when people find out but my point is to him he says hey i learned that as far as health is concerned a good german beer does the body good yeah so, so why. to him he says Man, look i don't care anything about you your religious cliches and all that nonsense this is what i do and mm -hmm. he so he's perfectly okay with it now mm -hmm. let me let me throw this in here as well he loves the lord i mean he's down with god i mean it's it, we don't talk about anything but god hardly you know mm -hmm. he loves god <laughs> with all his heart he always has he probably always will so you know but i we i think we just made this to be much more serious than it needs to be absolutely <laughs> When you're, um, <clears throat> when you're, you know, when you get upset at somebody or when someone gets upset at you for swearing, you know, what ultimately is happening there? It's a judgment, right? You're judging that person. You're saying, there oh, you your character must be flawed. You must be evil on the inside because you chose a certain word, right? And didn't Jesus say on four separate occasions, judge not. My father judges no man. I judge no man. I did not come to judge. And he was pretty, he was pretty clear about the non-judging thing, but you know, that's like the primary thing that goes on in most fundamentalist churches. It's a big judge fest, judging everyone else, gossiping about everyone else, what they're doing wrong. And, you know, it's just one of those things that like, it, it's what turns people off to religion. It's what makes people leave church. It's what makes people leave God. You know, I've, I've known many people, many friends of mine, even friends that grew up within church 
who yeah. literally left church because they got so sick and tired of the hypocrisy of seeing all this judgment being cast for things that they knew weren't wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying certain words if you don't mean anything bad by it. And I just, it turns people off to the good news and like that is doing far more harm than the swearing is doing, you know? Yep. And you, it's funny you mentioned that because remember when we were up in Reading and we all piled into Patrick's car, like, uh, or, or, were, were you I don't think I was there for that, no. Oh, man, you missed it. Because we all packed in, in Patrick's car like in a Coolio video, right? Yes. And, and we, we were loaded up. Like, this yeah. Tesla had every seat filled in it, right? And so we go up to Target, and, and immediately Thaddeus and Joseph, man, they're going out. They're in evangelism mode. They're out, they're out talking to people, right? So, oh, man. you know, we, we go inside. We minister to this homeless guy. We give him some money, help him get a room for the night and all of that. And then we come outside, and, and Joseph and Thaddeus, they, they uh, zeroed in on this couple, uh, a guy and a girl, and, and I guess uh, another friend, because it was a, a second girl in the group. And so they're over there vaping out, out, out on the corner of Target. And so they're over there talking to him and everything. And so I said, well, let me go over here. And so we're, we're talking and everything. And they, you know, like, they were listening, you know, but, but they were like, you know, you could tell how they're kind of like going through the motions and all of that, right? Because they're, they're trying to humor, you know, Joseph and Thaddeus, right? Mm -hmm. But then um, I said to them, I said, you know what, guys? I said, you know, you're up here in Bethel, man. This is like, you know, this is like Christian Central, right? You've you heard all of the sermons. You've heard all of the messages. You've heard turn or burn. You've heard change or, you know, or get left. All of these things, right? Mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you something right now, this minute, that up until this minute, everything that you heard is bullshit. <laughs> dude, that shut the conversation down. And all, dude was vaping the whole time, right? Until I said that, he stopped and turned his little thing off. Mm. And, and his girlfriend was like leaning on him up against the stanchion. He kind of eased her up so that he could stand up straight because he was like, he said, wait a minute. He said, nobody has ever said that to me. No, it, he, at that point, we had his undivided attention. And this <laughs> dude heard the gospel uh. because somebody said everything you heard up until now was bullshit. Somebody was, was real. Like, he was like, whoa. And, and, he, and that's what he said. He said, man, y'all the realest preachers I've ever come across. Mm hmm yeah, to a large degree, when somebody swears, at least for me, like when I'm around religious people, if they swear, I immediately go, ah, oh, I can kind of trust this person, you know? But if I tell that they're duck, dive, dip, duck, and dodge around swear words all the time, I'm like, nah, I don't feel safe around this person. You know, there's a, there's something in there that's not good. That's Aaron's waiting to exhale moment. Yep. All right, we're good. Let's be real. Everybody wants to be real, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I, I won't swear around people who I know find it offensive. Right, um, exactly. Typically, I won't swear around people that I know are religious at all, just because I assume that they think it's wrong. Yep. But that's not because, I, you know, what's, there's a passage where, is it Jesus or Paul who says that? You know, if something you know causes your brother to stumble and you do yep. it around them, you know, you're, you're the one in the wrong there. Yeah, it's like you don't, you don't eat a pork chop sandwich around a brother that came from Islam into Christianity. Exactly. You just don't do that. It's all just out of respect, out of love. Right. But it doesn't mean you think it's wrong. You're just respecting their exactly. beliefs. Exactly. And that's love. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. It's easy. So, so, so watch this. Let's, let's go ahead and, and, and put a bow on this, right? How do we turn this back to love? How is it that, what, what can we say to help people? Because, like, you know, people will talk to me, I'm like Aaron, you mentioned, or, or, or Kyle, you mentioned this too, that, you know, you, you don't mention that you're a pastor. You don't men mention that you're a preacher because when people hear that, they immediately try to clean up. But then you, then you mention it, right? And they're like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be cutting that. I'm like, no, nah, dog, keep it real. Keep it flowing. Just like you said it, keep it going. Why? Because I don't want to change you. That's not my right. job. Right. My job is to simply love you right where you are just as you are, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so how do we take this, you know, and, and, and say, okay, yeah, you know, there's cussing, there's cursing, there's swearing. And we know that, that swearing and cursing, there's literally 
biblical prohibitions on that, but people do that. But it's like you you say cussing is a big deal. That's one of the big four that Aaron mentioned. Mm -hmm. And 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 here's the thing: if there's no biblical prohibition on that. So we're majoring in the minors. How do we turn all of that back to love? Mm, great question. Yeah. You know, I, I think that, you know, real, real love allows a person to be who they are. And, and that's, you know, love brings freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Come on. You know, I love you both. And I would never try to, to make you fit into a form of what I think. And, and that could be about anything. You know, I have, I have things I believe and the things that I see, you may see, may not see. I, I won't try to force my opinion on you so strongly and especially to make you feel bad. And I think that's a big part of it. You know, I, I grew up in, like my mom, for example, I love my mom, but I know I won't ever cuss in front of her. Mm -hmm. She won't be able to handle that. Mm -hmm. Now, not that she will pass out and die or anything, but it's just not something she expects from me. Mm -hmm. Love says, don't worry about it, mom. You won't get that from me. There's no yep. need. Yep. But now there's a, another aspect of her love for me. She will say, son, you know what? I was surprised you said that. And it won't be guilt, judgment, or condemnation. She'll just be surprised. Yeah, that's another aspect of love because love keeps her out of offense and out of condemning me for doing whatever I may have done. Mm -hmm. So love work, it, you know, it has to work on both sides. It, it really, you know, again, has to deal with the heart of the condemner, of yeah. the judge, yeah. of that person who just feels as if this is the worst thing. And then my love for you, okay, well, if that's how you feel, I won't take you there. I won't take you there. Mm -hmm. That's so good, man. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Kyle just said it all. Really, um, love is true. Love is a love without conditions, you know. And uh, so, anytime that you are, you know, we as as Christians or uh, in our former, you know, fundamentalist life, when we put all these stipulations on people, like, oh, you can't come here if you use those kind of words. Well, that's not love to do that, right? Love is love says, come as you are, and. Um, you know, there's this really funny moment that happened in my church when I lived in Colorado as a kid. And uh, it just sort of, to me, it speaks volumes about this tension that we sort of place on ourselves when we have all these religious taboos and doctrines and dogmas, you know. There was a guy who was filling in for our pastor this one Sunday morning, and it was, you know, pretty strict. It was an evangelical church, but, you know, we follow the rules, swearing is not okay, all that stuff. And so pastor thing was pastor John, he was out, there was a guest speaker in, and, uh, he's, he's on the mic, right? And he goes, he's talking about pastor John, pastor John's so great. Oh, he's amazing. I just love the way he speaks. And he goes, he is so good at baiting the audience into what he's saying. You know, he just, he just baits the crowd right in, you know, John, he's just a master baiter. <laughs> and it was like dead silent. And then the whole congregation full of staunchy religious people just burst out laughing like a comedy store. Yeah. It was just the best moment ever. Like the tension just cut it with a knife. Every, oh, for, a, for a second in church, we could be real, right? Yeah. And I mean, you should have seen a look on this guy's face like he's seen a ghost, you know? And uh, they, he had to call Pastor John. I'm so sorry. I don't know how this came out of my mouth, but this is what I said. And he said, my, this is what my dad told me. And there's silence on the other end of the phone. And then Pastor John just, ah, ha, 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 just laughing his ass <laughs> off. Everybody is cool with it. He didn't, he wasn't, you know, cussing, but he used a derogatory term that not okay to use in church. And everybody loved it. So what does that yeah. tell you? Right. You know, right. with uh, with me and my sons, I've, I've opened it up to them because they're all teenagers now. And and I know the kind of language that they use. I I hear them when they when they're on PlayStation Live. Yeah. You know, it gets pretty colorful. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, I tell them, listen, I want you guys to talk to me like you talk to your friends. If that means that you have to use some profanity to make the point, make the point. 
Why? Because I don't want them to hold anything back from me. I want them to be as I want to be as uh, as open and as real to them as their friends are. Because that way, if if, if something goes sideways in their life, because if I if I put down uh, their language per se, then they might restrict something else from me that that if they tell me it might help them, mm -hmm. right? So, so what I've done is I've taken away the prohibitions and, and listen, it, it, hey, if you say, hey, dad, I got I, I need to talk and this is, we got, we have to have a keeping it real moment, mm -hmm. especially like I have a, one that just turned 18 and, and, you know, he's about to graduate from high school and, you know, he was like, hey, I got something I want to say. I don't, I just don't know how to say it. Just open up your mouth and say, well, you know, I got some words, dad, that I want to, and I'm like, okay, we use the words. You know, because I don't want to say, "Hey, I can't. I'm I'm the preacher. I can't. I'm too holy to listen to this." Too holy. Well, then he, then he's gonna be like, "Well, shit, I can't tell him anything." Mm -hmm. You right. know, but now, you know, my kids are like, you know, I mean, from the oldest to the youngest, they're like, "Man, I can I can talk to Dad about anything," mm -hmm. and and that's and that's the paradigm we want to give people because when Dad, Papa, mm -hmm. you know, what he wants to hear from us. And he wants to hear from us in in the way that we talk, not mm -hmm. oh the, uh, oh he dear heavenly Father, thou art holy. I worship <laughs> thee, and the I, I enter into my into your courts with thanks, and your your your, <laughs> pr your gates with thanksgiving. And you know, it, no, uh -huh. no, just listen. You know, the I, I guess like if, for anybody that's listening to this, I would just say listen. God loves you where you are, as you are. Keep it real. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that needs to be adjusted in your life, man, Papa will show it to you. Absolutely. And he'll take care of it. But don't listen to what people say. People will have all kinds of opinions, all kinds of rules, all kinds of stipulations, and they judge, judge, judge. Yep. It's not about that. Yep. You can absolutely use those words and completely keep your integrity intact. Yep. Right. In fact, it has nothing to do with your integrity because that, it's about the intent of your heart. Right. That's it right there. There That's you go. It. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> yep. Nailed it. <laughs> Bingo. But y'all, man, thank y'all for doing this because I wanted, I, this has been in my heart to do this for like, I mean, a year. Oh, wow. Literally a year. And, and I was just like, okay, how do I do this? And, and me and my wife, have we have these conversations all the time like they, how, how do I do this? She said, well, you know, you can't just go on and just be cussing. And mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I understand that, you know, but, you know, there's but things that we got to say. We can't do know. a podcast about how swearing is okay and then not swear. <laughs> well, th that's the whole thing. It's like, it's not, it's not about whether it's okay or it's not okay. Right, it just right. simply is. And, yep. and hopefully people will walk away from that with, with that sense. But I, I just want to tell you guys both, um, I, I couldn't dream of two people that I would rather have done this with than you guys. Yes. Salute. Likewise, hey, my let friend. Me, let me tell you, a year ago, I don't think I would have been ready for this. You know? No way. That's just, that's just being honest. At least to do it publicly. That's yeah. awesome, man. But privately, you know, I, was, I would you know, be me, but right, I don't right. think I would have been ready for this publicly. Um, but this is something I'm, I've, I've been toying around with the idea of, you know, sliding a word or two in a post or something like that. Always start with yeah. ass. Uh, start with ass. Everyone's <laughs> yeah. always cool with ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, ass is in the Bible. It's a gateway <laughs> so swear word. Ass. ass is in the Bible. It's so, true. So you you got you got two that you can that you can just you know that you can use pretty much with with impunity. <laughs> yeah. But I, I heard I heard us someone that I really was really respect and love listening to, in the in the really the opening monologue of her of her message. She let one fly, you know. And I I just I was watching it live and I just rolled laughing. I was laughing incredibly. <laughs> like yes, freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> So I said, you know what, Kyle, you just need to be free. Absolutely, man. <laughs> this, I told a few people, hey, I'm coming out of the closet. You know, I'm doing this video. I'm coming out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out. I'm a closet cusser. 
yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been behind the scenes for a while in the closet. So I told a few people I'm coming out and they were like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to see that. So uh, this, this was good for me. This was good for me. That's epic. Thank you. Know, you. Uh, one time when I was doing three court early on, when I first started doing it a couple of years ago, I, I said something dumbass, right? I said, that's, you know, that that's just, you know, I, I said, that's, you know, dumbass. That's dumb mm -hmm. as hell. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I, you know, and Mother Curly was on the, was on the. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what? And, 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 you know, like, and this is where me and Michelle Brown get a real close, right? Because she was like, I don't believe that you said that. You know, she, she said to me afterward. And I said, well, I'm sorry. She said, no, don't be sorry. She said, you know, we need to hear that, <laughs> you know, because, and, and I'm, I'm very, I'm very cautious about that. Cause like, just so, so, you know, um, Kyle, like mother Curly is the, is the mother of a friend of mine that passed away eight years ago. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. You know, which is mother Curly's daughter-in-law. I mean, it's like just, Oh, oh yeah. yes. Okay. Okay. It's, it's yeah. making sense now. Yeah, I'm connecting yes. the dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it's yeah. like the circle of life, you know, right? And, <laughs> right, and, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, gotcha. Um, but but anyway, you know, I'm like I'm like you. Like two years ago, I would have never dreamed of like, you know, uh, you know, cussing uh, publicly. But I have to tell you guys this real quick. We went to Hawaii on vacation five years ago. And and I took a book with me, the Gospel in 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 ten words by Paul Ellis, right? Mm. And I read this book, and that book was a game changer for me. It was a, it, that was a gateway drug, right? Yeah. But I'm reading this book, and I'm and 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 he's talking about freedom, talking about liberty, and and so I said, you know, up until we went to Hawaii, I hadn't had a, I hadn't had a, any alcohol in ten years. I hadn't drank anything in ten years. But then I said, you know what, I'm going to have a beer. And my wife said, well, if you're going to have a beer, she said, I'm going to have a margarita. And, and so, oh, yeah. you know, so then we just, we just kind of, you know, we said, okay, this is really not a bad thing. And then it was from that, you know, I, I said a cuss word. And my kids had never heard me cuss. They were like, oh. And then I had to explain to them, you know, like, listen, this is, this is not, you know, I'm not just being gratuitous or anything. Yeah. But this is, this is language. It's how and adults you're, talk. You're, yeah, you're going to hear it, you know? Yeah. So you might as well hear it from me. They probably you already know? said it before, too. Oh, yeah. yeah We're just surprised that you it. said it. Yeah, exactly. Well, you like, know, Look my, how far my, we've come, guys. <laughs> yeah. my, my mom said, told me something like when I, 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 not long after I joined the Navy, I was home on leave. And, and she, said, she said, you know, I know that you hear a whole bunch of stuff. I know you say a bunch of stuff. She said, I don't mind if you cuss around me. She said, just don't cuss at me. There you go. And, that, and, and so we've been cool like that ever since, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's the thing, man. It's like to say fuck means nothing. But if you say fuck you to someone and you mean it, that's like you're cursing them, right? It's yeah, about the intent. Right. So like it wouldn't even matter if you said freak you. Like if you meant it with the same intent, it's just as wrong. Right. There you go. What's the verse? Uh, man looks at the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. Right. That's all I need to know. Case closed. All right, I'm gonna throw this out here before we go, guys. I, I honestly, if 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 we could do this like like once a month, get on it and grab something really tough. taboo. Yeah, taboo. Yes. I'm so down for it. You have no idea. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I'm in. I can't get enough taboo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love you guys, man. You guys are a tremendous blessing to me. And I don't mean that in the religious sense. I just mean that you're fucking awesome. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Man, I love both you guys, too. This is awesome. Yeah, me, too. I love you guys. Thanks for having me, Derek. Yeah.